I'm excited about this weekend. We're kicking off a brand new series called Echo. Somebody say Echo, Echo. You wanted to do it. You wanted to do the Echo. I can tell. You wanted to do that. Uh, it's a two-week series, and we're going to be talking about our echo, who we are, the sound we carry. But before we jump into the sermon, I'm pretty excited. Uh, we're kicking off a segment the last weekend of every uh, month called Signs of the Times. Uh, it's kind of a fun segment. Some of, you are, some of you deep saints are like, he's going to just dive deep into the revelation. It's actually way less than that. It's just fun uh, church signs from around the nation. So here's a few. I, I don't know where we're going to be. Oh, yeah. So whoever stole our AC units, keep one. It's hot where you're going. <laughs> signs of the times. All right, the next one. Uh, the fact that there's a, a highway to hell and only a stairway to heaven says a lot about anticipated traffic numbers. This is why we're doing services every week. I like this one, too. Sin burn is prevented by sunscreen. That's what they did there. With the sun, the S-O. And okay, Noah was a brave man to sail in a wood boat with two termites. That's true. A lot of bravery in that. Adam and Eve, the first people to not read the Apple terms and conditions. The very first ones. And uh, don't let worry, this one's a little blurry, but don't let worries kill you. Let the church help. Should have been a comma. Okay. And uh, this is my favorite. Lord, help us to be the people our dogs think we are. Come on, that is our segment called Signs of the Times. I like that. It was kind of fun. Kind of a fun moment up top. So we're kicking off this two-week series, the definition of the word echo. And, and y'all know what an echo is, but it's a sound being repeated or reverberating after the original sound has stopped. Uh, there's this cool coffee shop over by our offices, and there's this long hallway, kind of this cool corridor area. And we were in there, and it echoes. I mean, the moment you walk in, the, if you just put a step, you can hear it echo. So my kids were like, woo, woo, woo. Like, hello there, hello there. Like, Salisbury steak, and, and then the, it's like, that's not good for you. I'm like, that, what? Who just said that back? And, and so we're having this moment. We're having a blast. I mean, we're loud. We're having a ball, and this lady pops her head out the door, and she's like, excuse me, we have a yoga meditation room right here. She's like, where are you guys from? And I was like, Second Baptist? Uh, can I not say that? What you do on this earth matters, and it echoes throughout time. The distance of the echo of your life is based on the volume of its inception. The louder the start, the further the noise will go. I read a story about this older couple and they've been married 65 years and he said, listen, if I go before you, uh, I have one wish. She said, what is it, what is it? I'll honor it, what is it? And he said, I'll, well, you have your money, but I've been putting a little money to the side. And she said, well, how much? And he told her. She said, well, that's a lot of money. He said, but I, I don't want anybody else to have this money. I want you to bury me with that money. This is my money. And she's like, oh, okay. And so he's like, because what I've done here on this earth, it needs to matter, and, and I, want my own, I want to keep my own money. And so she said, five, well, five years later, <clears throat> he passed away, and, and uh, before they closed up the casket, she put a shoebox in there that, and put a little sticky note that said his money and put it in there. And her friend said, did you really? Did you really put, did you really honor that? She said, I'm a good Christian woman. Of course I did. I kept my promise. I kept my word. She said, well, it must not have been that much. She said, oh, it was a lot of money. She said, there's no way you could have put it in that shoebox. She said, well, how did you do it? She said, well, I went and gathered up all his money like he asked. I put it in a checking account, and then I wrote him a check. <laughs> put that in the box. <laughs> the louder the start, the further... The noise will go. I love that the echo of Hope City since day one, seven years ago, the echo that Hope City carries is the sound of worship. Come on, can we all agree on that? The sound of the prophetic, the sound of breakthrough, the sound of deliverance, the sound of revival. And the truth is all of us individually carry a sound. So ask yourself this question this weekend. What does my echo look like? Charles Spurgeon said, every Christian here is either a missionary or an imposter. What's the sound that we make? Does the atmosphere change when we walk into a room? Our lives should have an impact on this earth that goes beyond our time here on this planet that echoes again and reverberates throughout eternity. So if you're writing down notes, you can write it down. What will the sound of my life be? Let's pray and we're gonna jump in. God, I thank you that you give us ears to hear you a mind to understand. Most importantly, God, we need a heart ready to receive all that you have today. God, unlock our sound, unlock our echo in Jesus' name. Amen. Two weeks ago, I talked about the life of Jabez. I like breaking down different Bible 
characters in moments because the truth is we can actually take moments that they walked out. We talked about how Jabez possessed the character to carry what God had entrusted him with. I know I got a bunch of DMs, people were talking about it, like do I possess the character to carry what God is entrusting me with, the call, the purpose, the anointing, as a dad, as a husband, as a friend, as a leader, what is God asking me to do? And today, we're gonna be looking at the life of David and the echo of his life, the sound that he carried of hope, of courage, and of fight. And if you've been in church for any amount of time, your instant default is he's gonna talk about David and Goliath. Okay, cool. Oh, they sang champion, giants fall. I get it. But I actually wanna look at it from a different angle. I wanna look at it from the angle of the journey that led up to David ultimately defeating Goliath. So this week in week number one of Echo, the title of my sermon, if you're taking down notes, is Prepared and Ready. Prepared and Ready. We all come up against and have to fight Goliaths and storms and situations in our lives. It's not a matter of if. The truth is we will face them. How many of y'all have fought some Goliaths in your life? Come on, that might have come in the form of a diagnosis or a money crisis or a family dynamic or an addiction, but we all face things in life, but it's important to remember, I need you to grab this, you don't defeat Goliath when you're actually in the fight with him. I'm going to say it again, you don't defeat Goliath before you step, uh, before you go into battle with him, you actually defeat Goliath before you ever go into battle. Let me break it down, let me unpack it. When we step into the battlefield to fight a Goliath or a situation in our lives, we're not going to have time to learn how to fight. Like my wife is, uh, she's dainty. But she can fight. I'm telling you right now, like she's she's tough. She's a tough girl. Where's all the tough tough ladies at? Come on, like. So my 11 year old who will be in our next service, I call her a dainty tomboy because she can put lip gloss on, but she can throw. Like she, that's her. And so mama and dad, we've taught our kids about self defense. They're doing taekwondo. They're breaking boards. They're doing all this stuff because the truth is, you cannot defeat Goliath in the middle of the storm. We don't have time to deal with or come up with a strategy in the middle of it. We're not gonna have time to develop the needed and necessary faith and trust in God during the fight. That is developed in the process. It's developed in the process. What happens before the fight is what leads us to victory. So in the natural, the United States military, I don't care what branch, Army, Navy, Coast Guard, Air Force, Marines, the National Guard, none of them just gather a bunch of random people and throw them into battle. No, no, no. They fully train them and equip them with what they need, what's necessary and needed to set them up to achieve victory. Because the truth is we all face trials and we all face daily challenges and we're all in this place where we can either panic and bail and not fight or we can go into the battlefield with audacious faith, knowing that God has already written victory in our story. And David does this. David realized God has already written victory in my story. Write this down if you're taking down notes. We have to embrace, though, the process of preparation. Eesh, this is tough. We have to embrace the process of preparation that's tedious and sometimes boring and repetitious and it doesn't feel adventurous. The truth is in this process of preparation, there's a pruning and the process can sometimes be painful. But the truth is you can, reje- you have, you can reje- reject it. That's why I said you have to embrace it because you can reject it and have this, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, you know that one person, maybe it's you. You're like, I got it. Like, I, I don't need it. Like somebody invites you to something and they're like, well, let me tell you where it's at. You're like, I'm from here. I got this. And then you show up and nobody's there. And you call him like, hey, did you guys, I guess, switch to a different IHOP? Like, I'm here and you're not here. But the truth is we have to embrace the process so that we're not in this position where we feel like we've just got it all figured out. I'm good. I got it figured out. I don't need to, to, to take a bunch of advice. I don't need a process preparation. I'm prepared. I'm ready. But the truth is we have an advocate because we don't have it all figured out. Anytime we get in the way, we're going to mess it up. The Bible says in John 14, 26, that the Holy Spirit literally equips us. He's our advocate. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, I love this, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Because what ends up happening when you think you've arrived and you don't think you need the process of preparation, you'll end up showing up all by yourself. We don't have the process of preparation It's easy to be defeated before our battle with Goliath ever 
begins. So we're going to look at David. We're going to look at how he walked into this battle with Goliath, but he knew that he would be victorious. Well, how come? Because he had fought battles in the past. He was tending to his father, Jesse's flock, and he had to deal with a bear. He had to deal with a lion. So he knew if God delivered me before, I feel like we have to get back to this place. Last year, towards the end of the year, I talked about spiritual disciplines. We should have a spiritual discipline to pray every day. We should have a spiritual discipline to worship every day. We should have a spiritual discipline to read the word every day. And then I said, there's a fourth spiritual discipline that I feel like we're missing, and that's simply remembering. Just simply remembering all that he's done. Because the enemy wants to try to tell you, you're not gonna get through this. Oh, really? Because look, look right here. God showed up for me here. He fought for me here. He showed up and delivered me here. It might have been in the 11th hour, and you might have told me he had, he had abandoned me, but he didn't. He was right there. And the truth is, we have to get to a place where we recognize that if God did it before, one of the definitions of the word testimony is do it again. And David knew if God did it before, if he gave me the courage and the boldness to take on a lion and a bear, then surely he'll give me the strength now. 1 Samuel chapter, thir- uh, uh, Samuel chapter 17, verse 33 through 40. Now, this is a little PG-13, so this is, this is kind of an intense story, but, but I think it's amazing. Verse 33 starts with this. You don't have a chance against him. This is Saul. You're only a boy, and he's been a soldier all of his life. Verse 34, but David told him, Your majesty, I take care of my father's sheep, And when one of them is dragged off by a lion or a bear, I go after it and beat the wild animal until it lets go of the sheep. This is intense. And if the wild animal turns and attacks me, I'll grab it by the throat and kill it. Well, (laughs) David's like an MMA wrestler. Like this guy, (laughs) he's all the way in. Verse 36, sir, I have killed lions and bears, so I'll kill this worthless Philistine. He shouldn't have made fun of the army of God. Other translations talks about how he was mocking and rising up and mocking God. David couldn't deal with it any longer. Verse 37, the Lord has rescued me from the claws of the lions and the bears. Surely he will keep me safe from the hands of the Philistine. All right, Saul answered, go ahead and fight him. And I hope the Lord will help you. Verse 38 through 40 is a little interesting. Saul had his own military clothes and armor he put on David and he gave David a bronze helmet to wear. Verse 39, David strapped on a sword and tried to walk around, but he was not used to wearing those things. It's kind of like put me in Skechers. Same thing. I just wouldn't know, just wouldn't know what to do. I can't move, David said, with all this stuff on. I'm just not used to it. So David took off the armor and picked up his shepherd's stick. He went out, uh, out to the stream and picked up five smooth uh, rocks or five uh, smooth stones and put them in a leather bag. Now, Bible theologians believe because Goliath had four other brothers, the reason why he grabbed these five stones He's like, I'm going to take, take on Goliath, and then if any of his brothers come after me, I at least, I just love the audacious faith. Not eight or nine, not ten, like, I'm a marksman. I've been trained. God has prepared me. I'm ready to take on whatever the enemy tries to throw at me. So I'll grab five smooth stones. Then with his sling in his hand, he went straight towards Goliath. See, a lot of times in our humanity, when we see giants, we see obstacles But God judges differently. God will take a small boy with a submitted heart, place his voice in him, mix his spirit with the flesh of man, and cause a sound to ring out in eternity. He'll do the same thing in you. He'll take our lives, our submitted hearts. He'll mix spirit and flesh, and an echo will begin to be unlocked in our lives that ring out through eternity because your life will echo when God speaks through it. You can write that down. My life will echo when God speaks through it. There's a different level of boldness when the echo of God's voice speaks through it. There's a different level of, uh, of, of confidence and audacious faith that rise up that says, I want to pray for you. Well, I appreciate it. No, I mean right now because I believe healing is in my hands. I believe the Spirit of God is on my lips. I can speak the word over you. And just like when Jesus walked this earth and the disciples saw miracles, I can see a miracle. There's a boldness and a confidence when your life is positioned for God's voice to speak through it. Taking down notes, write this down. An echo starts where there's faithfulness. An echo starts where there's faithfulness. If you examine the ancestry of David, we find Boaz and Ruth, and Ruth was well known for her faithfulness to her mother-in-law. And it's said that her good character was passed on to David. David was anointed to be the next king of Israel before this event. 
while this was his future reality, he had to be prepared and ready before he was appointed to the throne of Israel by Samuel. But his dad, Jesse, gave his regal son the task of delivering cheesy breadsticks to the battlefield to the soldiers. So literally, David showing up like a pizza delivery man saying, it's not delivery, it's Dave Giorno. <laughs> See what I did there? It's not DiGiorno, it's because his name's David. All right, I'm going to pass on that one for next service. I thought it was good. It was his faithfulness. <laughs> that was terrible. It was his faithfulness in the day-to-day -day job of food delivery that led him to this moment of greatness, ultimately defeating Goliath. The second thing about David's faithfulness, faithfulness was the little things in his training as a shepherd boy. I said this a couple weeks ago. Faithfulness isn't always fun, but in your obedience, it is always fruitful. You see this amazing story of David's life defeating Goliath, ultimately becoming a king one day, but it was the faithfulness that he had in the small. David was a shepherd, tending to his father Jesse's flock 24 hours a day, seven days a week, nobody to talk to. He would talk to the sheep and they'd just be like, okay. And I believe that solitary, those boring, mundane moments where he didn't have things distracting him, where everything wasn't just a click away, he had the ability to hear the still, small voice of God because he was spending time in the presence of God. God prepared David in the mundane, menial task of just shepherding, but it ultimately was going to unlock the greatest moment in his life. I love the uh, quote. I love this quote by Mother Teresa. She said, little things are indeed little, but to be faithful in little things is a great thing. The principle is character is not revealed in great deeds, but in little things. Things. I referenced this verse last week, Luke 16, 10 says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. An echo starts where there's faithfulness. Number two, write this down. An echo starts where there's wisdom. An echo starts where there's wisdom. David knew that the armor didn't fit. He could have just overrode it and said, okay, I'm gonna go out here and just kind of clump around. Our kids will put our shoes on and Fox, our little Fox man just turned three and he'll clump around in my shoes. I'll say, get those off. I don't want those getting creased because I'm a sneakerhead. You go put on mom's shoes, leave mine alone. But there's wisdom in the echo of David's life. He knew this armor didn't fit because God has equipped me with my own echo, my own set of skills and weaponry. God wants to place a unique, resonating sound in you. Watch though, but it must come from him. Don't try to build a legacy after someone else's purpose. Don't try to echo someone else's echo. Your echo's original. Your echo, I, I went spelunking. I went 600 feet under the ground, cave dwelling. It's the worst. Some of you are like, why did you do that? I know, I even signed up for it. I had to sign a medical release. I'm like, you may not make it out. I'm like, okay, let's try it. Like, what? <laughs> so I'm under there, and we would climb through these little cracks, and there was sometimes we had to hold our breath to just slide through, and there was one time we had to lay on our back and push mud out of our airways just to get our breath. This really happened. Whew. I almost sent a letter up with a pigeon and said, or a bat, a cave bat, and said, tell my wife this has been a good run. Because we... <laughs> But there was this really amazing room that opened up that was like the size of a football field underground. And there was this echo that would last and last and last and last. Don't try to build a legacy after someone else's purpose. Let your echo be original. That's why I said last week, God can't use who you pretend to be. God has set you up with a supernatural purpose and a call. Last one, write this down. An echo starts where there's perspective. David knew God will establish me. I don't want to be seen with any unhealthy ambition. I don't need to put on this armor that doesn't fit. My perspective is I know what God has equipped me with. A giant will roar and then fall, but this shepherd boy, David, would kneel, and his whispers and his prayers would ultimately become his echo. I don't know who this is for. Maybe it's Cinco Woodlands watching online here at West Houston. Maybe you're here and you're like, Daniel, the truth is my echo is muted. The truth is, I don't even know if God hears my prayers. I'm telling you, if you'll stay consistent, if you'll continue to lean on his promises, 
if you'll continue to stay in his presence, even if you only have the strength to whisper his name, if that's your echo, he's just one mention of his name away from being right there again, your very present help in a time of need. David got before the Lord, had these quiet moments with God, and God was reinforcing him. Before David ever faced his greatest challenge, God was training and equipping him during the everyday journey. That's why our daily relationship with Jesus is essential. That's why it's foundational. Why the consistent prayers of a righteous man and woman of God availeth much. That these faith-filled moments in his presence will actually become our echo towards whatever challenges we might face. That's why it's important, write this down, knowing that God prepares us for battles before the battles. God prepares us for battles before the battles. God prepares us before we ever face Goliath in our life, before we ever have to walk through that storm. David had developed great faith in God to give him the strength to win the battles. When David was preparing to fight Goliath, I love as we were reading through earlier, he, he began with such confidence telling Saul, listen, God delivered me from the paw of a bear, from the paw of a lion. And the same God who delivered me then, I just love the audacious faith, is the same God that will deliver me now against this Philistine. Anytime my wife and I have ever had to walk through a challenging situation, I do what I mentioned earlier. I go back and say, God, you showed up. You showed up when they had to do emergency surgery to save her life. You showed up when we were walking through tests for 43 days and they were talking about cancer and multiple tumors. You showed up when there was no amniotic fluid left in my wife's womb, so they said, and we had to do an emergency C-section on my oldest son who's sitting on the front row. You showed up. You were fighting for us then, and you'll fight for us now. David had the audacious faith to say, let me remind you. And sometimes, let me say this, sometimes you just have to say it out loud to remind yourself prophesied into the atmosphere. God, you did it before, so I know that you're going to do it again. God, you fought for me before, so I know you're about to fight for me again. I might feel surrounded. I might feel the daily pressing of the hell trying to press around me, but heaven is stronger inside of me, and the one who's standing with me will always be stronger than the one who's been standing against me. I feel like somebody should praise God right there. And this is why we're passionate about relationship over religion. We challenge you every day to be in the word. Grow your faith every day. Be in prayer every day. Worship God every day because this is preparing you for battles before the battle. We sing this song, this is how I fight my battles. Y'all know that song? This is how I fight my battles. This is how I find my battles. How? By getting in the word every day. How? By building up your most holy faith every day. We're all given the same measure of faith. All of us. We're all given the same measure of faith. But you don't have to stay stuck there. You don't have to put a lid on your life and never grow past that. The truth is, uh, I know a lot of you, it's mostly just the design of this sweatshirt. You're like, he, I assume he works out. <laughs> I know. I know that you were like, clearly, look, he's obviously a runner. I can see. But physically, there are things that you can do to build up your strength. Uh, I told my wife, I said, I've been studying a lot about this carnivore diet. People just eating high levels of protein. She said, you already do that. I said, I don't do the carnivore diet. She said, oh, I misunderstood. I thought she said the carnival <laughs> diet. I thought she's been talking about the carnival diet. But in the natural, there's things you can do. How many of y'all work out like you enjoy working out? It's decompressing to you. You feel like, okay, I work out. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so I feel like, you know, physically, this is what I look like. But spiritually, I, I kind of feel like this is what God sees me like right here. This is more like what God sees me like. This is what God sees me like. Haters are going to say that beard is fake. <laughs> People are going to say that's a clip on. No, but every day when you pray, <laughs> every day when you spend time in the presence of God, every day when you worship, every day in the natural you may feel weak, but in the spirit, God is building you up. 
There is strength to take on the Goliaths in life. There's boldness to rise up and push back against the enemy. There's boldness that says, devil, you can't mess around with my family anymore. I have the authority to resist you and you have to flee. There's boldness to rise up when you're spiritually fit. Come on, give it up for my friend Dwayne. That's who God sees me as. I'm fully convinced of that. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be consistent in prayer. The truth is we have to build ourselves up every day so that we can rise up with the faith we need to be able to decree and declare, I've got the victory. Look at the person next to you and say, I've got the victory. Come on, say it out loud. Now say it like you mean it. And then look at your second choice and say, you've got the victory. Come on, prophesy it over them. You've got the victory. David records in Psalms 23, verse 4 and 6, he said, Even when I walk through the dark valley of death, I will not be afraid. Why? For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. You actually prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You welcome me in as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. This is a whole song, y'all. Verse six, surely your goodness and unfailing love. Now, I grew up in church, so every time I'd meet Shirley, I'm like, oh, I've heard about you. <laughs> surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the, how many? All. Now, say it again, how many? All. all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord Forever, David realized even when it didn't seem like there was a way out and life felt dark and hopeless, he knew that God knew the outcome. David said, I will not be afraid. He rose up with confidence and courage knowing there will be an overflow of fight, courage, blessings, and hope. But David had to, like us, walk out the process of preparation. He had to be prepared and ready. I mentioned this before, but I think it's really fitting today during the process of preparation we have to develop also strong unshakable faith because faith eradicates fear but write this down this is the opposite fear tolerated is faith contaminated fear tolerated is faith contaminated i've said this before but i want you to grab this it literally muddies the waters of your ability to trust god when you allow this in second timothy 1 7 though talks about for god has not given me a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear will cause you to retreat and cause you to throw in the towel and cause you to focus on your situation more than the bigness of your God. But when you allow the spirit of the living God to rise up inside of you and become the echo of boldness and great faith, you can live out a verse like Isaiah 43 too. Look at this. When I go through the deep waters, it says, I will be with you. It says, when you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Why? Because God's with you. He's in the middle of it with you. He's on the other side of it with you. He was, he was helping you pre-pray and premeditate it in that preparation time. But I believe as we lean in and we recognize that this bold faith, this bold, audacious faith, push back against the fear, push back against the timidity, push back against the lie of the enemy that says you're not gonna make it. Come on, somebody just needs to say it until they believe it. I'm gonna get through this. Come on, I'm gonna make it. I, um, I was writing down some thoughts as we were closing today and as we keep going and echoing what God is speaking through us, I believe faith over fear has to be our process. Faith over fear has to be our declaration. But I wanna give you three, I wanna give you three uh, simple ways to practically prepare and build your faith daily. You can write it down so that your life will reverberate and echo the confidence of who you are and whose you are. Write these down. Number one, this is practical, but it's important. Number one, study the Word of God daily. Every day, study the Word of God daily. Even if it's one verse, just read it over and over again. Be consistent. Psalms 119, 11, David said, I hide your Word in my heart. So when you're walking through a situation or you're faced with a challenge or a, a Goliath presents himself, the word of God is hidden in your heart. So you have the ability to combat it with the word. So you have to study the word of God daily. Get it in you so it's out of the overflow that you live your life. Number two, we have to speak the word of God daily over your life. Speak the word of God daily over your life. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing 
and hearing by the word. You can drive along and listen to the you version, but there's something about flipping through the pages and decreeing it over yourself. And put your name in there. Surely the goodness and mercy of God will chase after Daniel and Jackie and Brecken and Finley and Daphne and Fox all the days of our life. Speak the word of God over your life. Proverbs 18, 21 says that death and life is in the power of your tongue. So choose life. We're really good about speaking negative. We're really good about having a negative slant in life. But what if you just put on joy and what if you woke up tomorrow on Monday and said, this is going to be the greatest week of my life. The rest of my days really are the best of my, day, my days. Yeah, but Daniel, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't, but God does. And he can equip you with everything you need to overcome. Number three, we have to pray the word of God daily over your life. Pray the word of God daily over your life. Spend time seeking God and pray the word. Matthew 6, says to seek first the kingdom of God. Another translation says, above all else, as your first priority. That way, when you have a showdown with a real giant like Goliath in your life, you can go into battle with the confidence and knowledge that the same God who led you to victory before in your past will be the same God who will show up again. Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic. Why? For the Lord God himself will personally go before you. He will neither fail you or abandon you. That's great news. That means we win. Come on, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna count to three and I want you to shout, we win. One, two, three, we win. When God goes before you and he's fighting for you and he's handling things for you and he's setting you up for victory, our responsibility in all of this is to simply prepare. Prepare for the battle. Be prayed up and equipped in the spirit. Build up your most holy faith. Don't walk around armorless, but walk around knowing who you are. Get fit in the spirit. Grow your faith every day. Don't miss a day where you don't spend time in relationship with the Lord. Close your eyes as I close with this truth. The same God who led us to victory. God, I thank you. The same God, you, O oh Lord, that led us to victory 10 years ago. God, the same God in you who was the same yesterday, today, and forever that led us to victory five years ago, one year ago. The same God, Lord, you have led us to victory six months ago, even a month ago. The same God, the very same God who will lead us to victory over our battles today and tomorrow. God, I thank you today that we recognize that you're here with us, that you're for us. David's echo that we continue to talk about today was built on his faithfulness, his discipline, his courage and his great faith. God, instill the very same fight in each and every one of us and let this be our echo. Holy Spirit, I pray today that if there's any area of our life, God, that has felt diminished or weak, God, today I pray that we would have that right perspective, that we would have that sort of wisdom unlocked, God, that we would be able to lean in and press in and have great faith. God, build Build confidence in us today, God, to draw closer to you. Wake us up, God, in our sleep. Nudge our hearts to spend time with you. Let your still, small voice interrupt a moment. God, we want to hear you. We want to draw near to you. And God, today I pray and I thank you for your faithfulness. Will you stand to your feet and just lift your hands towards heaven? We do this almost every week because I like this posture of open-handed surrender. Will you do this? Come on here, Cinco Woodlands, even at home. Just put down your cereal for a minute. Just set down your puppy dog just for a minute and just lift up your hands towards heaven. God, I thank you that this is how we fight our battles. Right here. We fight our battles in your word. We fight our battles in worship. We fight our battles through our prayer life. We fight our battles, God, positioning ourselves in a position of surrender because even though it looks like we might be surrounded on all all sides. You are surrounding us, God. Your fight and your faithfulness is surrounding us. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. See, this is how I fight my battles. Come on, just sing it till you believe it. Yeah, this is how I fight my battles every day of my life. 
Because it may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded. I feel faith rising. Come on, even bolder. It may look like. It may look like Jesus. Oh, come on, even bolder. It may look like. Oh, it may look like. Come on, let boldness rise up. It may look. fighting for you. Can you give him praise today? Come on, he's fighting for you. It might look like you're surrounded, but he's fighting for you. We trust you with every eye closed just for a moment if you're here and you say, Daniel, here's the truth. I haven't been able to take on the Goliaths and the situations in my life because I have fully felt like I'm good. I've got this. I don't need anybody. There has not been a process of preparation because I don't know Jesus. The reason we do all of this, the reason we gather, the reason why we're talking so much about an echo that reverberates past this life into eternity, the reason why legacy is important, the reason why God wants to instill his voice in our lives is because there's a purpose, there's a call. We want you to know God. We want you to find freedom. We want you to discover your purpose and we want you to make a difference because there is a tangible, supernatural call in every person. But it all starts with the foundation of Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, when we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. With every eye closed just for a moment, I'm gonna count to three and across all locations, I want you to lift up your hand if that's you. said, today is my day, Daniel. I'm gonna give my life to Jesus. Or maybe you're the second invitation. You said, the truth is I've been living my life reckless. I have, I've been caught up in the prodigal life. I've been honestly choosing me. 
and I fell away from Jesus, but today I want to rededicate my life. One, I want to surrender my life for the first time. Two, I want to rededicate my life. Three, lift up your hand. I'm looking all over the room at West Houston. I see your hand. I see hands popping up everywhere, all the way in the back. Come on, just, just leave it up. Come on, leave it up, leave it up. Amazing, you can put your hands down here. Cinco Woodlands, I see you back there, my friend. Come on, I want everybody to pray this prayer with me today. Say, Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me, and it's not working. From today on, I choose to live for you. I repent for every sin, every mistake, every issue, and all my struggles. From this day on, I will live for you. You are my Father, you are my Savior, and you are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, give God praise. Let's go.